But well, here's a- something that totally blew my mind related to contacts. And maybe, I don't know if you know how it does it, but the other day I was wishing somebody a happy birthday over text messaging. Mm-hmm. And my iPhone said, we've recognized a birthday. Do you want to update your contact? <laughs> and it went okay. straight into that contacts app, which was really slick. Perfect. Great. Okay. That that's three different things that happened that made that happen. And so let's peel it apart a little bit because that's that's why I'm bringing up the whole context conversation. There's a form field in every contact card, which is birthday. And if you fill that out in the contact card, it'll show up on your calendar. So you don't have to go to your calendar and make a reoccurring annual event for somebody's birthday. You just put their birth date on their contact card and then it does that for you. Hey, Siri. What does JMAC fix? JMAC fixes everything. Coming to you from the Owl's Nest Studios in Portland, Oregon, it's JMAC Fixes Everything, where we answer your tech questions and discuss all things Apple. For valuable, actionable, real-world Apple advice that you can count on, look no further than JMAC Fixes Everything. Now here's your hosts, Jamie Pollock and Audrey Isbell. So hey everybody, welcome to another conversation. Uh, JMac fixes everything. I am Jamie. This is Audrey. Say hi to everybody, Audrey. Hey everybody. I gotta figure out which this Zoom mirroring thing really gets to you. <laughs> uh, so w- welcome to JMac fixes everything. Uh, we talk about all things Apple and try to answer some questions. Make sure we get some good questions answered. Uh, we're kind of winding down a series of conversations that Audrey and I have been having about the switcher, the switching from uh, Android to Apple. And we've kind of hit a couple of big points. Uh, last week, we really kind of hit the photos conversation pretty hard uh, and that really how to manage photos in a, a PC world with an iPhone is the epitome of switching, of like understanding what needs to happen or how it can happen or what your options are. Uh, I, of course, have been terrible because I keep saying the solution is buy a Mac laptop and that's not what anybody wants to hear. Uh, but it is the solution. It's the, I don't know. It's what my husband wants to hear. <laughs> ah, right. Exactly. That's exactly right. That's what the hubby wants. It was like quicksand. We said it was like like sinking in quicksand. The conversation was to try to figure some of that out. And we even went on the Windows PC and did some screen sharing. And we found the uh, the the iCloud for Windows utility. And it turns out that that does still exist. I did some research. It is called iCloud for Windows. Uh, and it basically does photos more than anything else these days, I think. Uh, but of course, I just saw a blog article this week that says iCloud for Windows is actually corrupting people's videos as it downloads and uploads them. Uh, and that... Uh, Uh, deleting it off of your Windows machine doesn't stop the corruption from happening in your iCloud area. Uh, So it has to do with something the way iCloud is is going through this tool to get it onto your Windows PC, Uh, which comes back down to our apples to apples and everything's going to work, apples to oranges, and we might have a couple of problems. And so we are going to not go back to that topic now, but I just kind of wanted to give an update uh, about that. Did you have any feedback or or comments about that last week's conversation and or the iCloud for for Windows thing? Well, I mean... It it might explain some of the challenges I was having in the moment, just trying to share it with you too, right? So I I was super, you know, grateful that you sent that article over to me and that we were talking about, you know, yeah, this is buggy. And it's maybe not just a user, rather a learning error or an error of not knowing what Apple is supposed to play like. Um, And or as we talked about skirting the system and doing it like a hacker or like getting into the file structure or or whatever, but maybe that wasn't the bigger problem. Maybe the software doesn't work quite right. Correct. Yeah. Well, on that topic, I just want to bring this up real quick because this is part of being a new Apple user. It's about being any sort of technology user. Uh, you know, Apple just recently came out with Mac OS Ventura for the laptops and desktops. iOS 16 is out for the iPhone. Mm-hmm. iPad OS 16 is out for the iPad. And and I think we've talked about this once before, but the question always comes up, when do I upgrade? When should I go to the new system? Uh, and my standard is normally like when it's at like 16.0, I might wait. Once I get to 16.1, you know, that they're, they've got incremental updates. They're fixing bugs. They're making things better. So Mac OS Ventura for the laptops and desktops is at 13.0.1. <laughs> So not quite 13.1 yet, but I have a, a, a lot of people and clients and friends contacting me, should I upgrade? Is it time yet? 
and I'm giving the same advice. Once 13.1 comes out, I'm going to give everybody the all clear. Now, iPad OS came out at 16.1. The very first, they didn't even release 6.0 or 16.0.1 because it was just too buggy. And I think they wanted to wait so that it came out with Mac OS Ventura at the same time. So iOS 16 came out like three weeks earlier. And then Mac OS Ventura and iPad OS 16 came out the same time. And one of the big things is the iCloud shared library. So there's a new photo library that you can share among family members. And I think they wanted that to come out on, on the iPad and the Mac OS Ventura, right? And so also I've noticed that as I'm doing my what's new classes, what's new in these operating systems, my Mac OS Ventura class and my iPad OS class are close to identical. The features are very close to the same, even though one is a mobile operating system and one is a desktop operating system but the feature sets match each other, which is another explanation of why iOS came out a month earlier, and now these two came out together. But, <laughs> and here's the but, is again, are there bugs? Are there changes? Is it gonna be a bumpy transition? And that's one of the things that we all need to plan on. If I'm gonna make a big, trans did we have this conversation earlier? If I'm gonna make a big transition, I better plan for it. <laughs> and I better have some time for fallout afterwards. I better not be in the middle of a big project or needing to deliver something right when that happens. And so I just got a call from a longtime client, um, Barclays Gardens, and he uses pages for some of his uh, quoting and invoicing. And they took away the share menu option that said, send a copy through email. So previous to Ventura, you could say share, send a copy through email, and then it would pop up and say, well, what format do you want it to be? PDF, pages, Word, and then you chose it, and then it would attach it to the email in the format you requested. Well, they've taken that away, and now there's a share button, you say mail, and it attaches a pages document to mail, and there's no option in between to make it a PDF document. Wow, that really changes the process for people. It, for right. his work, he, he, yeah. he had to hire me for half an hour to figure out how does my workflow work now. Mm -hmm. And Ventura took away a major thing that he used. And that's why I'm like, don't be an early adopter. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be an early adopter. Unless there's a feature you can't live without, right? Oh, I have to have stage manager. I got to see what stage manager is. You may not need the new operating system for six months. I know people that are three operating systems behind and they don't miss it. They just don't know the new features and they don't care. Right. Um, but if like a, a something major is going to change, then all of a sudden things are going to be different that, that you're not going to be able to be productive. Or uh, in your case, we're still trying to get you up to a certain point so that the rock stops rolling back down the hill at you. Right. Into the Sisyphus reference we made before. Right. We want to get to a plateau. And last week I felt like we hit one of those plateaus because you said, you know, my friends are saying to me, you've made it. You're there now. <laughs> like you're one of us. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and all that. Um, but then the photos conversation back into the quicksand, right? Back into the, you know, there's always more. And so a couple things I want to do today. First, I want to, to, to highlight or mention that uh, if, if you're watching the webcast and not listening to the podcast, you know, it's my background. We're in Zoom and my background's different. This is actually Mount Hood. This is downtown Portland. I'm normally sitting in the classroom, uh, but uh, I want to kind of inspire differently this time. I want to have some conversations outside of the classroom. And that's why I'm now up in the West Hills with a beautiful view behind me. I just wanted to get out of the classroom a little bit uh, to have kind of a bigger conversation. Is that is that okay with you, Audrey? That's great. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. There I've always go. been out of the classroom. I mean, my background is Star Wars. So. <laughs> <laughs> I might be in a whole nother galaxy. I thought it was Escher. I thought it was. Um... <laughs> well, we're going to have some of that come up because you and I have been talking about last week the mention of some of these new features, once I learn what they are and how to use them, I feel like I've got a superpower, right? We've been joking about the, 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 that epic journey of discovery, right? And even what you said is that I, I feel like a more inspired learner. Sometimes learning is like pulling teeth and sometimes it's like, ooh, give me more, give me more, mm -hmm. right? And I want to delve into a little bit of that. Talk a little bit about how I approach curriculum, how I approach my students and, and the learning process. We've talked about this a little bit, uh, but I want to get some feedback from you along the way because you're on the journey, mm -hmm. right? And I do want to frame this as, as, as a journey, right? It's an, And we call it an epic journey so that we can be a little bit more storytelly about it, right? Is it, is it going to, is this going to be your lightsaber? Is it going to be your, your Mandalorian chain mail? Is it, you know, what's, what's <laughs> the, the weapon? What's the, <laughs> what's, what's the tool going to be? Right. I actually put on my baby Yoda socks for this. I'm wearing my baby Yoda socks. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to have to get me some of those. <laughs> 
part of learning, part of training, and also part of mastery, getting to expert level, ultimately, depending on what your goal is. Is it just, I want to just use it. I want to be proficient with it. I want to be top level at it. That's a completely personal part of your journey. Mm -hmm. Right. And the way I approach all of this, and you've heard me say it before, I'll say it a hundred times, is that we start off building a foundation, giving you the basics, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't understand, and we talked about my first course, all the basics, level one, where we, oh, what's this hole do? What's the, the buttons do, right? Where are the speakers? <laughs> like, right. There's cameras, where are the cameras, you know? Um, the other part about all the basics is we go over uh, settings, right? Once I'm inside, uh, how do I deal with the settings? And so for me, that base foundational level when we talk about a device whether it's a laptop or an iphone or even an android it's the operating system mm -hmm. yeah. right what what is the operating system what are the features of it how does it work and that dovetails into what we were just talking about that there's new operating systems every year from apple and now there's new features but i might not know the old features right i might not quite quite understand, understand how the changes or be able to follow with you know if somebody's talking about oh this new thing rolled out but you're just you know, completely blind to it. <laughs> right. And and you've gone through the, the all the basics level one for iOS, but you haven't gotten to part two yet, the, what I call um, navigating and apps, you know, and so what is the second level above foundation, right? Once we got our solid foundation, we understand the operating system. It's, well, how do I now navigate between apps and when I'm in an app, you know, what are the things and, uh, and, and how are you feeling on your iPhone about that kind of stuff? Like once you're in mail, once you're in Safari, are you feeling comfortable? Are you navigating okay? Better better and you actually answered a, a number of questions for me that were app related you know i had asked you about you know what is going on with where is my um the url area of safari when we did the scrolling. safari 101 section oh. um that actually had my part two class built into it oh okay right because the idea is where do i tap to get backwards how do i get back where i was how can i tell if there's more to see right um, the navigation, and I, and, and even I'll, I'll go ahead and talk about what that is in the classes. Of course, left left pointing means up and out. Right pointing means down and into. Right? Do you know where that originally that navigation originally came from? You ever heard of the links system? L Y N X links. Um, I think I have heard of it, but I'm not so familiar with it that I would know. Back in the days, really in the eighties, <laughs> back in the eighties and nineties of VAX and VMS systems and. It was the original internet. It was before the internet had a graphical user interface. It was green screens and it was all the colleges and you could go like read other people's papers, right? So it was really just a storage of documents. And it was like the Big old Yahoo, discs. the old <laughs> Yahoo index where you can go up and down the index, mm -hmm. up and down, and you could go right to go into the, the folder or left to go back up a level. Mm -hmm. And we only used the four keys on the keyboard to go forward, back, up and down. Okay, I do have some experience with it then yeah, as a that, kid. <laughs> that is the, the basis of internet navigation was that Lynx platform with just the four keys, up, down. Man, and we've then come so far, haven't we? <laughs> into and out of. Well, maybe not, because that's still how the iPhone basic works, is if you see a left pointing blue arrow in the top left corner, you're not at the top of the hierarchy. If there's a right pointing arrow anywhere in the list, that means go down into that section and see more, right? And so the, that navigation hasn't changed. But what I teach in part two is also the drawers, opening the drawers from the bottom and closing them, right? And, and when do I know to navigate that way, which is a whole different kind of navigation where I can slide the drawer open and see more information, slide it shut, you know, things like that. Um, and then also the other thing in that class we talk about that I think is important is uh, commonality between apps, right? The fact that I can show you what the symbol, like what is the share symbol, and now the share symbol is everywhere, right? So if you learn it, you don't need to go, oh, what is it in Safari versus what is it in something else, right? And so, except for, of course, in mail, it's the forward arrow and not the share button, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> it's not whatever to me. I need to know this stuff. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so so now we're building on on you know our journey, right? Our journey. Where do we start? Well, we we start realizing that there's a ring and we have it, and it needs to get carried to Gondor and melted, right? Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna gather our fellowship and get the fellowship together, so the Lord of the Rings can come and do what we need to do as a group to to make this epic journey of discovery. Uh, fighting spiders and trolls and all sorts of things. <laughs> so anyway, our foundational learning uh, operating system, our second level 
apps and, and the tools and the things that we use, you know, and then that breaks out into like specific apps. And that's where we did Safari 101 or mail. How, do, how does mail work? Uh, mail contacts and calendars. You know, I don't think everybody realizes how integrated those things are, you know, and so it's this building up of it. But I guess some of the questions I wanted to throw at you to, to kind of give me some feedback is my classes are normally two hours. They're very intensive. They go over a lot of stuff. Uh, people get overwhelmed. A lot of my clients are older folks that get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm thinking about restructuring that into like just hour snippets, maybe doing a series over three or four or five weeks, you know, not trying to push so much in a day mm -hmm. um, and, and have it a little bit more digestible. I think the important thing to kind of enter into this conversation is that everybody has a different learning style and approach to how they want to receive the information. And this journey with you doing this has been really helpful just in the way of self-discovery of, of understanding my own learning style. It's always been super important to me to be able to take something right away and be able to work with it. Um, it's that hands-on approach and how does it apply to me right now, you know, and, and actually it's made me feel a little bit self-centered, right? Like, you know, there's a, a bigger world out there of learning to do that it doesn't apply to me at all, but just to know that information would be really cool. And how do I start to do that a little bit better than to just have it, you know, apply to me right away, right away, right? Well, let me, let me say one thing to that um, point, because it's a good point, but learning is selfish. You got to be selfish to, to learn. It's got to be about you. How can I improve? Oh, I how can I improve? Then. How can I improve me? That's learning. Like you're not. Well, I'm not going to take a class to improve the world. Like I need, you know. Um, let's even get back oh, to like if I've got the lightsaber and I need to learn how to use it. You know, then... I want to though. I want to. You know, it, it is about being that good guy. You know that. Well, that but, but you learn baby Yoda through the whole universe and. <laughs> but but you're not going to learn how to use the Mandalorian flight pack while doing it. You've got to learn how to use it and then use that to go save the world. Like, yeah, hands right. down, you're right about that. <laughs> like the, the learning part is you selfishly figuring out how can I get to the highest level I need to or want to with this tool that I have, right? This phone or this iPad or this laptop or whatever it happens to be. Right. Right. And then now we can get the more... Like I want to say meta, but that's the wrong term to use these days. I don't mean it like that. Um, more, more microcosm, macrocosm, right? How can I now, now that now that I'm I'm getting better at my tool, how do I use my tool to make things happen in the world around me, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I think that is again this evolution we're looking for is I'm now comfortable with my phone. I'm now comfortable with the way Apple does things. Um, I still run into what the, what is this or what did they mean by that? Mm -hmm. Um, but it, it is this, uh, there needs to be some selfishness to get where you need to be. And then, then we'll tackle the world. How about that? Mm -hmm. Sounds okay. good. <laughs> so a couple things, any feedback on that whole, just, I just wanted to kind of talk through that a little bit and make sure that I kind of made it clear what my approach oh, is as far as, it's you know, wonderful to, to kind of have that validation. Right. Um, because I was feeling a little bit guilty about, you know, like my own approach to to learning this. Um, and the other beautiful thing about like running through the basics, right, the courses that you have online already is that they're they're in bite sized chunks already. So I can we do split them up into like seven minute, 10 minute topics. And so if you're going yep. through the class, it's a two hour class, but it's a bunch of yep. tiny videos that you can watch. 100% down with that because I couldn't just do a full on sit down and get through it. Um, you know, could I, you know, maybe, but then we're talking about, I've got a schedule time for that. Whereas, sure. you know, 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there um, makes it really digestible. And yep. I'm able to kind of move around a little bit and, and capture the things that I need the most in that moment. So hence, that brings it back to that selfishness, that that weight that's about me and how I need it in my life right now. And so that was really helpful to have that. Good, good. Okay, so... A couple things I got. I got two different things on my mind, so we're gonna go go over them one at a time. Uh, you know, we always like to make sure we're asking you kind of like, is there is there something that you've got a question about, or how can we help you? Um, but also this this whole time, I think we're like nine, ten, eleven episodes in. I can't. I don't. I can't count right now. Anyway, but um, I've been letting you kind of drive a lot of the conversation and bring up topics, and it's time. It's almost my turn to start mentoring a little in a different way and kind of give you some guidance. I hear I what you're, you have questions about, 
right? But I, I am the coach, I'm the teacher. And so I'm, I'm gonna start bringing some topics uh, into the realm. <laughs> awesome, I love right? that. So that you can try to get out of the spider webs. Um, and so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is something about the iPhone that I think everybody needs to hear. It's not in a specific class, and that's really where I feel like this platform is helpful. Um, because I can bring up a topic that, that, or maybe it's even in a class, but you'd have to watch two hours to notice the five minute comment. Where's the comment? Where did he say that? Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be about the contacts uh, application. So how are you, are your contacts in your iPhone? I think they are syncing with my iCloud technology, if that's the right way to put it. Um, yeah. Well, they, you know, they, having come over from Android, all of them were in Google. And that's right? fine. Yep. And, and so that's, that's totally how I fine. Have them. <laughs> well, we, we had a conversation earlier, and that's one reason why I bring this up is where's my data? Right. Honey, where's my data? <laughs> right. And it could be in iCloud, it could be in Google, it could be in Yahoo, it could be, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter because the contacts app will show you all of them intermixed. Mm -hmm. The contacts app is an app that can pull from multiple servers, multiple cloud technologies. So they could be in iCloud, they could be in Google, they could be anywhere, and contacts will show them to you, and therefore they will be fully functional on your phone. Calendars, same way. You could have a Google Calendar, you can have an iCloud Calendar, they're gonna overlay each other once they're in the app. So to abstract from the where's my data, because I don't really care. It could be in Google, it could be in iCloud. I'm an equal opportunity technologist, and honestly, for, and we've said this before, anybody who's gonna use an iPhone and a Windows machine, Google should be your cloud. Google is the only one that's truly cross-platform. We've seen the iCloud for Windows thing is, is, is buggy. It doesn't quite work. I wouldn't trust it, mm -hmm. right? Google yeah. works with all platforms. So there's no problem with that. So, but you, if you open your contacts app on your phone, you have contacts. Mm -hmm. Good enough. So one of the things that people miss that I end up I see their light turn on once it comes out of the classes. Once we get past the foundation, we start talking about the apps and then we get down to how do I use it, right? How do I bring it all together? Your phone is a communication tool. It's a mini computer and we can look up information and we can do it, but ultimately it's a phone and it's a text messenger and it's a WhatsApper and it's a FaceTimer and it does all these ways of communicating. And because of that, your contacts database is the hub of the best information on your phone that you're going to use most. More apps feed in and out of it. The information in it needs to be clear, clean, and concise. And I see a lot of my older clients who will put the first and last name in the first name field, and then in the last name field, put notes about the person. So in a lot of phones, I'm Jamie Apple, <laughs> you know, or something, you know, like, <laughs> Um, you know, Jamie Pollock, Apple uh, support person, or you know, or um, I know people. Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I know people who've who've put like the the first two letters of this because they travel from state to state as snowbirds, and so they'll put the first two letters of the state they're in in front of the person's first name, right? And, and they don't use the contacts app as a database the way they should. And so that's one of the points I just want to make because some people just get it because they were trained that way or they learned it in college or they've used spreadsheets and databases enough to understand, oh, wait, this is like a spreadsheet with fields and columns and rows, but it's in a database structure. But the first name field needs to have the first name in it. And the last name field needs to have the last name in it. And if I want to put an initial, I need to add the middle initial field because it's not there by default, right? And so when you look at a contact card and see, well, what form fields, this is a form we fill out with the phone number, and we can even label it. This is the home phone. This is the work phone, right? Here's their emails, which is the email, the work email versus the home email. Is this their vacation home? Is this their primary residence, right? Is it their work address, right? Um, and so using the fields, what they're made for is important. Using the nickname field, things like that. Uh, the notes field. There's a great notes field. People are like, well, I want to be able to search for this to find the person, so I have to put it in their name. No, you don't. When I put myself in a client's contacts in the notes field, I, I put Apple help, and then I search for help, and my name comes up. <laughs> I like, you forget who I am. You forget, like, you just you need help. Type in help, and I'm the contact that pops up, right? And so it is important, right? to have clean data, concise data, and using the form fields correctly. And I don't think a lot of people hear it. They start creating systems, especially my older clients. They don't know how to use it. 
and then they create a system that works for them. And then I see it, and I'm like, oh, Lord, <laughs> what is happening in this database? So any idea why I'm so, like, I'm kind of driving this point home. Do you have any idea what is so important about clean contact information? Well, I think it's a lot of what you're saying is that it comes back around when you're trying to conduct a search or do anything with the data later. That is exactly right. That's why I love having you around just for that. Um, <laughs> But well, here's a, something that totally blew my mind related to contacts. And maybe, I don't know if you know how it does it, but the other day I was wishing somebody a happy birthday over text messaging. Mm -hmm. And my iPhone said, we've recognized a birthday. Do you want to update your contact? And it went okay. straight into that contacts app, which was really slick. Perfect. Great. Okay. That, that's three different things that happened that made that happen. And so let's peel it apart a little bit because that's, that's why I'm bringing up this whole context conversation. There's a form field in every contact card, which is birthday. And if you fill that out in the contact card, it'll show up on your calendar. So you don't have to go to your calendar and make a reoccurring annual event for somebody's birthday. You just put their birth date on their contact card and then it does that for you. See, I knew that Google did that because I've been a long standing Google girl, right? Yep. And Google but, does have the birthday calendar. You can see it when, right? So uh, Apple has that too, the birthday calendar. The iPhone. Um, but now we can add birthday. secondary addresses like anniversaries or other important dates that have to do it. Something else that you ran into is called a data detector. And this oh. is something that happens in, it's been happening in email for a long time, uh, but apparently it's now, it's now showing up in, in messages and other places. If you have an email or a text message that has a date and time in it, uh, and it detects it, it will say, would you like me to put this on your calendar? I can tell that this, like, you've been invited to this event, right? There's Siri suggestions now. Like I get an email about a flight and next thing you know, Siri is like, can I put this on your calendar? Because I found it in your Gmail, right? And it's, it's analyzed the email and realized, oh, this is a flight confirmation for this time and date. And you're going to want this on your calendar, mm -hmm. right? And so if you, in a text message, say happy birthday to this person, that, oh, wait, today's that person's birthday. Would you like me to take note of that? Right? So these are all kind of automated ways. The one that I teach in class, I think, is kind of fun and funny. And I told this joke earlier, so I'll tell it again. Uh, is you can say, hey, Siri, Alicia Pollock is my wife. And Siri will go bleep, bleep. Do you want me to remember that Alicia Pollock is your wife? And I'll say, yeah. She said, okay, I'll add that to your contact card. Oh, hey, Siri's in the background answering the question right now. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> and so now that Siri's added that to my contact card in the form field called related names. So let's say spouse, Alicia, son, Sip, daughter, Grace, right? Father-in-law, Gary, right? Connect their contact card in the related names field with the relation to me. And now I can say, tell my wife I'll be home at five. And Siri knows wow. who my wife is. Right. So I say, wow. H Siri, tell my wife, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden there's a text message going out with that quoted. So the joke that I did for my students was I had before class said, H Siri, Alicia Katz is my girlfriend. Oh. They were like, do you want me to remember that? And I'm like, yeah, remember that. And so when I was in class, I was demoing this feature and I went, uh, Siri, tell my girlfriend that I'll meet her at the hotel at eight. And the whole class was like, oh, like they all know Alicia. They, they know. And then Siri popped back. I will tell Alicia that you will be at the hotel at eight. And they were, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> um, but again, it's the fact that in my contact card for her, there's a name value pair under related names, wife, spouse, Alicia, right? And everything else flows from that. See, I did not know that. And that will be super handy because I've been really kind of over articulating to Siri through my watch, you know, when I'm going to be home, right? Uh, message Brian, you know, and, and uh, so that's good. That's good to know. Yep. Because yep. there's a lot of Brian's out there. <laughs> well, and also if you say, you know, say, tell my husband and you get past that and say, tell Brian, totally. which Brian, you've got five Brian's in your contacts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Um, you know, we don't even actually call or text uh, about where we are and when we're going to be somewhere anymore because we use Find My. Well, OK, so that's I'm glad that you mentioned that, because the other day I thought this was totally magical. We have a gate that has to be manually opened. And I rolled into the driveway and it was already open, which is very weird. Right. So it shouldn't be open for long. What's going? it doing open? And my husband was actually standing at the gate with it opened for me. 
<laughs> because he had used the find my feature and he, he was like, I know I knew exactly where you were and I, I thought I'd come out and get the gate for you. <laughs> yeah. That's is that awesome? It's so awesome. I'm like, can you do that every day? <laughs> Ooh, right. Yeah, set a precedent. Yeah, watch out, setting a precedent. Watch out for that. <laughs> Uh, also, just so you know, in the Find My feature, there's an option where you can say, notify me when this person leaves where they are, or notify me when they get to their next location, or when they get home. You mentioned that, and I'm like, how can I get myself into too much trouble with that feature? <laughs> but those notifications are kind of fun. You know, they're they kind, of, kind of neat that they can do. Um, this whole conversation feeds back to why I brought up the Contacts app and the fact that it is the nerve center. It is the brain the nerve center of your phone. It's where everything comes together. You know, an email may put something on the calendar, right, or whatever like that, but the contacts is really um, something that for iPhone users needs attention. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are, bah, you know, it's, it's like, that's the least of my worries. Uh, and when I'm like, if you wanna get to, to be the Mandalorian with your chain mail, then it's paramount to take a little bit of time and, and see what's there, how it could be used. You know, even like, I don't know if you know, there's a couple of weird fields in there, like phonetical name. Oh, really? Yeah, so you, so, that. so you can put in their first name, but then also put in their phonetical first name so that if that it's, if cool. right, it's if it's pronounced different than it's spelled, yes. you can actually put it in there and have a better chance of. Uh-huh. It's funny, uh, Thanksgiving, I, I know this is probably going to be a, a month or two after it, but Thanksgiving just went by and we were listening to uh, um, Alice's Restaurant Massacre. <laughs> um, I'm not familiar. The Thanksgiving song uh, by Arlo Guthrie. Um, and he pronounces it Massacre, and so did Siri. Siri's like, I will play Alice's Restaurant Massacre. Oh, how funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> you, you, Siri, you do that. You Good that. luck finding it, Siri. <laughs> <laughs> okay, questions or comments about that topic or like why that's no, what I, I brought up? No, I think it's uh, really super powerful. Um, you know, one thing I noticed about the contacts uh, app area is that when other people change their image, it seems to change. But oh. this is for some and not for all. There's a couple of different things going on, um, and we'll talk about them briefly, but part of it's going to come up in another conversation we're going to have, because that's your, your avatar, right? The little circle is your avatar. Um, and it can be a default image that they recommend. You can pull something out of your own photo library and have it be that. It could be a Memoji. Right. It could be a em emoji that you created to look like yourself or a bitmoji is another term. And we're going to talk about, you know, that uh, <laughs> as a whole nother episode. We're going to go over memojis and animojis and all the emojis because yeah. um, that's a fun part of the phone. Right. How can I have more fun? Of them. <laughs> it's really <Right>? confusing. <laughs> and the giffies. We'll look at the giffies and the, and the little image pictures and, and playing games and messages. You know, you can play pool with people in messages or play rock, paper, scissors with people in messages. <gasps> no, I did not know. That. Oh, well, Oh, I can't wait for that episode. <laughs> so there's a new feature where if you change your name or if you update your picture, um, you can send it to other people through messages and say, would you like to send this to them? And then you'll get it and say, do you want to accept it or not? So in your contacts, you are free to put any image on anybody's contact. And then that's what you'll see on your device. Right. So you could like do personal pictures for all your family members or even for me and Alicia or whatever. And, and then on your phone, you'll don't change because I set them. If you set them, they should stay to what you set them to be. Okay. If somebody else has changed theirs on the other end and they've said, send it to you, then you normally can opt in or out. Oh, okay. I, I don't think it should just do it. I mean, maybe, maybe it does. I often at the very top of the messages get a little thing that says, so and so has has a new picture or you know has changed their name or image would you like to update your contact card mm -hmm. so normally you get options you don't just it doesn't just happen you have to say okay okay i might not have experienced that yet maybe not maybe not really? um because and and again because your contacts are based in <laughs> well because your contacts are based on a google platform does the images work that same way or not Mm -hmm. You know, that's we're always going to as the, the switcher conversation. We're always going to talk about 
you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you how it works in the perfect apple universe, the apples to apples apple universe. But anytime we got an orange in there, a feature may drop off, or it just may not work exactly the same, or mm -hmm. you know, it's like like the two Apple devices may negotiate, it, and then when you hit the save it to the contact, Google goes, "What is that? I don't even recognize that." Like, you know, does Google have the same form fields that that the Apple contacts is using or not? Are they all universal? Did I customize a, a label? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, there's things that can kind of get in the way, uh, but that is new and it's fun and you can control it on your device and or push to other people and they may push to you mm -hmm. does that help yeah okay. yeah for sure uh, and there's there's more kind of fun contacty things you know now that that uh some of the stuff happening in messages the shared with me people that have sent me photos videos uh links to podcasts i can now go to the share with me area and see what people have shared with me if somebody shares a photo with me it's going to just show up in my photos app even though i didn't save it it just happened to be texted to me mm -hmm. so i can now see that in my photos app because someone has shared it with me um you know but <clears throat> even some of that stuff links back to contacts mm -hmm. right um, when you say the related name, instead of just typing their name in, click on it and link it to their contact card. When you're in photos and you're using the people in the places area, you're using the facial recognition for people, type in their name, but then check, pick them out of the list so that it links that to their contact card. And now their contact cards linked to every picture you have of them in your photos application. Whoa, I don't think I have any experience with that yet. That sounds well, you're, really You're going to cool, start though. in photos and look for people and then start using facial recognition to identify people. But as you identify them, you're going to you'll type their name in and it'll drop down type of search. So anyway, That's we awesome. are now to the point where we are going to ask Audrey about a topic uh, and try to give her just either an answer or an explanation or make her life easier. Um, and I think I know which one I want you to ask, or do you want to, <clears throat> want to just go for it yourself? Oh, no, you, you can totally, uh, I, I wanted to hear, I wanted you, you to ask about, <laughs> I wanted you to ask about handoff. I thought that was a, 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 a terminology. Like we said, is it terminology um, or is it, it a is. It's terminology. And it's, it's strange to me because I read this somewhere, probably just as I've been learning Apple things, right? And uh, so I come across Apple handoff. Is that like an Apple relay race? And if so, are we passing pink lady apples or galas? There we go. <laughs> no, it's all Macintosh. I told you last time you made that joke, I told you they're all Macintosh apples. <laughs> Mac, Mac, Mac. But okay. seriously, what is handoff? <laughs> what is handoff? I think that's a great question. Um, and it's funny too, because when handoff first showed up, uh, there's a couple things that need to be in place for it to work correctly. Uh, and they've also kind of taken it even farther now with continuity uh, and, and even uh, camera continuity and a couple other topics I'll go over while we talk about this. Handoff is the idea that if I'm on my phone and I'm near my laptop or my iPad, if I'm doing something, the other devices will have an awareness of what I'm doing. So I can then hand it off to the next device. Mm. Here's okay. And again, because you're not using an Apple laptop and you're using a Windows laptop, you're not, this is a feature that you don't get. Unless I walk into my friend's office who's using a Mac laptop. And no, I because somewhat. they have to both be logged in. <laughs> they have to be using your Apple ID. Oh man. Right. So now you've got air airdrop, okay. right? Airdrop is, is uh, so <clears throat> okay. So airdrop is the way on your Apple device you can pass a file or an image to any other Apple user, right? If you're okay. both on this within Bluetooth or on the same Wi-Fi, you can use airdrop. So share through airdrop. It'll find all the devices around you and then you tap on it. They have to accept it. You can't just airdrop to anybody. Okay. Right. Gotcha. So there's your terminology for that. You walk into your friend's office, they're on their Mac laptop, you want to give them a picture, airdrop it onto their laptop directly. Perfect. That is different from handoff. So let's distinguish this. Handoff okay. is, I'm on my, uh, I'm at the bank and I pull my phone out and I start writing an email, right? And then I'm done at the bank. I put my phone down and I get, I go home, I get home and I pull my phone up. Oh, I didn't finish this email. Mm -hmm. but I don't want to do it on the little screen. So my laptop is like, oh, wait, you've got mail open on your phone. And so the mail icon shows up in the dock. I click on it and it takes the entire email over onto the bigger screen and onto the laptop. Oh, wow. So you're finishing what you started. I can hand off something next. in progress. Oh, wow. That's cool. Right. I could be typing a text message and then decide, well, wait, wait, I got a, my phone's running out of battery. Let me move to my iPad. 
and just hand over the, the note, hand over the pages document, hand off whatever I'm working on. Wow. Wow. That so is let me see if cool. I can make this. I'll show you this real quick. So here we are. You see my desktop, right? And I down do. here along the bottom, you see like pages and messages and music and all that down here along the bottom. Yep. So I'm going to open my phone up and I'm going to open up mail, create a new message. Okay. You see this guy right down here? Yes. It says mail from iPhone. Is this because you have handoff actively running in the background? Handoff is always available as long as I'm on two Apple devices, both logged in with my Apple ID. Okay, and so you don't have to like push, right? You don't have to say, hey. I opened up a, an email or... and I've addressed it to you. I'm gonna end the subject it? line, type in the word handoff. Oh, you're blowing okay. my mind. Now I'm gonna come down here and click on this in my doc. Wow. And there's the email I started authoring on my phone. I can put my phone down and use my big keyboard now. Wow. Right? Yep. And there's a lot of different things that can leverage handoff that way. That's fantastic. Right? You know, I but imagine... it is, it's, it's this weird awareness that this device and this device both know what I'm working on and I can hand it off back and forth. You know, like I've been writing this, but I need to leave. I need to go. I'm not taking my iMac with me. So let me push it over onto my phone so that when I'm out at the at the park, I can just keep working. Mm -hmm. you know? I imagine this solves so many problems for so many business owners. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's funny because having documents in the cloud solves some of those same problems. Sure. But it's not so uh, instantly gratifying. <laughs> you know, it's not just like right there, like it's right uh -huh. at your fingertips where you can just slide it over, slide it back. Um, a couple other features that have come out of this. So this, this whole concept is called continuity <clears throat> when it comes to Apple and, you know, their overarching concept of how, how the Apple universe works. Um, they've been working for years to develop this idea of continuity that, that I am me, I have an Apple ID, I've got five devices, they all should know who I am and they should all know what I'm doing, <laughs> right? And it's not spooky, you know, it's, it's not like Big Brother, it's not like that, it's, it's these are my tools, mm -hmm. right? What if, what if my lightsaber knew that my chain mail was doing something, <laughs> right? Like, so now I've got superpowers and my tools are all connecting, they're all on the same page, you know, which makes it pretty powerful. Uh, there's a new thing that they just came out with on Ventura and iOS, uh, iPad OS 16, which is why I think they came out at the same time, where you can set your laptop next to your iPad and they will literally become the same screen and you can drag between the two of them using the mouse on either of them. Oh, wow. And it's not air, it's not airplay mirroring. You're not mirroring. It's, and they had something called Sidecar. I want to use my iPad as a second monitor. That was called Sidecar. Mm -hmm. This is literally just the devices I could have my iMac, my laptop, and my iPad, and the three of them would realize they're next to each other and become one big screen. <laughs> wow, that's super cool. All right, and so that's like yeah. handoff on steroids. That's that's yeah. really taking continuity uh, to that. Now, I haven't seen it work smoothly yet, right? It's a brand new technology and they've been promising it. Uh, but just like any technology, how old is the hardware? Are you on the latest operating system, mm -hmm. right? What is what is supported? What isn't supported? And so, you know, I think that's where a lot of people feel like everybody to technology companies fall down, you know, but we've had that conversation where hardware improvements, hardware innovation drives software features, right? And so it's not like, it's not like they're saying you have to buy this hardware. Mm -hmm. But this software feature relies on that level of hardware. Sure. And then you make if you want decisions. the latest, greatest. Right. You make your own decisions. <laughs> That's not planned obsolescence. That is, that is a, a healthy love of innovation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So handoff and kind of what's possible. So I think that's a, another great conversation. Okay, I feel like we did really good today. Um, thank you for letting me bring the contacts conversation in. Because again, like I said, after we get our foundation, we get our understanding of, of navigation and apps. Um, to me, that's one of the umbrellas. That's one of the overarchers, right? You use your phone the way you know how to use it, but you may not know why or how it works that way. Yeah. Uh, and understanding that contacts is the nerve center. Contacts is where everything comes together for communication specifically. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a hundred other things we can do with our phone that don't use contacts. 
And I think the, the one last thing I'm going to say about context that I think is, is funny is how many of my older clients uh, swear to me there's not a contacts app, an independent contacts app, that contacts live in the phone app. Oh, is that right? Because, well, you go to the phone <laughs> app and you tap the contacts tab and boom, you're in contacts. And they, I can see why they would say that. I have seen, I have, I've had <laughs> 20 or 30 That's clients cute. swear to me that there's like, there's no a separate app called contact. No, there is. There's an app called contacts and I want to go into the contacts <laughs> app and check. They're like, there's nothing. That's, I've never heard of that. It's in the phone. You go to the phone app, you tap on contacts. Well, yeah, that takes you to the contacts app. Now you're in a separate application. What are you talking about? A separate <laughs> It happens also when you're in the camera. When you're in the camera and you take a picture and you tap on the preview, it takes you into photos and you're not in the camera app anymore. But the, you don't see it. They don't tell you. <laughs> you know? Right. Uh, and so that's, I always think that's funny that people that think the contacts app doesn't exist. It's just the phone app. <laughs> okay. Anything else for you today? Anything you want to? No, I think, I think I got the, the most burning question out there and, um, yeah, I'm just I'm super excited to see, you know, more about where this is headed and and to just, you know, really dig into my learning because this we're, process has been super cool. We're going to bring uh, some more. I'm going to I'm going to try to bring some more of these connector concepts. Right. How does it all fit together? Right. How, how can I get that bigger picture? Uh, then also, I'm going to threaten this. We're going to bring in some guests, questioners. I've uh, got a couple other students who have been asking great questions, and I might have them on as guests and have them bring in their questions uh, and still keep I'm going to keep Audrey around so that oh, she... Oh, wait. I'm still in the hot seat. <laughs> I want to keep Audrey around to clarify, to make sure that it makes sense to the switcher. If it can make sense to an Android user, then it can make sense to everybody. My dog did not eat my phone. We did not <laughs> well, get some homework done, would you please? With that, I am Jamie J. Mac Pollock from Royal Wise. Thank you, Audrey Isabel. We always love having you here. Uh, and then everybody else, we will see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.